Hello everyone, I think it's time for an update on the Quantizer project. The work has been progressing quite good, and I have continued to work on adding basic functions to the sign, as well as refining which features I want to have. For example, the ORP2040 doesn't have any built-in persistent storage for data apart from the flash memory. So I need a small EEPROM that I can use to store calibration data and user parameters. I have also been busy making the first PCB prototype to get a more robust platform to develop software on. By putting the switches, the encoder, OLED display and the jacks in the correct places, it makes it easier to connect it to other Eurorack modules. Another benefit is that I also get a feeling for the ergonomics of the module, so I can make changes early on if something doesn't feel right. But let's start by jumping into KeyCAD to have a look at the schematic diagram. If we start at the left side, uh, we have the trig inputs. Those are, there are two of them. Uh, they are routed uh, through a buffer, basically uh, straight into the microcontroller. Next, we have the CV inputs. And the circuit here is an attenuator to bring down the URAC levels down to something that is between uh, zero and uh, three volts, approximately. And we have a buffer stage here. And uh, the offset uh, input here is used for uh, switching between unipolar and uh, bipolar. And I, I do that by, by changing the offset of the, of the input here. Finally, we have a couple of shot key protection diodes that are uh, protecting the ADC inputs on the microcontroller so we don't exceed the, the input levels. Next we have the microcontroller, which is basically a standard uh, configuration that I use with some uh, decoupling capacitors for the 3 volts. And uh, I also have a switching fit up here that is used for isolating the 5 volts from the PCB or from the board with the 5 volts from uh, USB. And I have added a reset button because that makes development a little bit easier. Finally, I have added a 3 volt uh, voltage reference to the ADC VREF on the, on the microcontroller. Next, we have uh, the user interface, which is basically an OLED display uh, connected by, via uh, Y square C and uh, an encoder switch and four regular push button switches. At the bottom, we have uh, the power section and uh, not much to say about that. I convert uh, 12 volt to 5 volt here uh, using an LDO. Here we have the E square prom that is used for storing uh, parameters and uh, calibration data and things like that. And it is connected to its own I square C bus. Finally, we have the output section uh, with the PWM outputs. And you can see the, there are four identical. Uh, they are you. Each one is using two PWM outputs from the microcontroller over here. And uh, there is uh, some low pass filtering going on here. And also uh, I set the, the gain of the, of the amplifier here. And finally there is a current limiting resistor on the output and the output jack for the one volt per octave uh, output. So with the first iteration of the schematic diagram finished, the next step is to design the PCB. And I decided to make it 10 HP. I could probably have squeezed it into 8 HP, but uh, it's good to have some space on the front panel so it's not too crowded. I ordered a stencil with the PCBs, so the SMT assembly was very easy, and I soon had an assembled PCB ready for all the through-hole components and a 3D printed panel. After that I made a quick mock-up of the front panel, so I could 3D print a dummy panel. I have not added any text yet, since I want to have the most of the software finished before I start to label things like buttons and the jacks. Okay, so what's going on with the software then? I've started with a basic user interface, where I have two dedicated buttons for selecting root note and scale since I think that this is the most used functions on the module and uh, I want to make sure that I can change this easily on the fly. So I don't want to have a lot of menu diving to access those functions. There is also a separate button to access the input and output functions. These are connected to the trig inputs, the CV inputs and the 1 volt per octave outputs. I have a lot of functions in mind here, so it's inevitable to have some menus. 
Finally, there's a system menu button. This is where I hide all those functions that I don't need an instant access to. For example, global user settings, calibration and programming functions. Let's dive into the calibration procedure. And first of all, we will need to calibrate the PWM outputs. I have four outputs named out A to out D, and right now the software is only using the first one, so I will only calibrate that, but the procedure is the same for the rest of the outputs. First of all, hook up a good multimeter in voltage mode to the out A connector. I have a 5.5 digit bench multimeter, so I will use that. If you only have access to a budget digital multimeter, but have a good calibrated VCU, you can use those together with a tuner to fine tune the tracking of the output. Let's start by calibrating the offset, and for that we will just need a multimeter. A handheld budget multimeter will work fine if it can display millivolts. Press the system button. Select Output A Cal. The display will show trim to 10 millivolts. Now we use the encoder knob to trim the output to around 10 millivolts. Press the knob to store the value. Now we are presented with the instruction trim to 1.000 volts. For this step you will need a good multimeter or the VCO setup I mentioned before. Set the output as close as possible to 1.000 volts and press the knob to store the value. You will need to do the same adjustments for 3, 5, 7 voltage ranges and after that the module will cycle back to the offset adjust page again. When you are happy with the calibration, press the system button and the, this will exit the calibration mode. Alright, that didn't seem so hard. But what have been the challenges so far? It turns out that the 12-bit ADC have been giving me a hard time. And the root cause is actually how the Raspberry Pi Pico module has been designed. The Pico is designed to be powered from USB or an external voltage source. And it converts that into 3.3 volts using a switch mode power supply. Which isn't really ideal for supplying a stable analog supply voltage for the ADC. The ADC reading is very noisy and there is an offset error around 0 volts that needs to be trimmed. The voltage reference shouldn't exceed 3 volt according to the datasheet and the number of usable bits are reduced since it's not linear near full scale. The onboard SMPS can be turned off and be replaced with an LDO but the overall impression of the onboard ADC is a little bit underwhelming to be honest if you compare it with an Arduino for example. Okay, so what all this boils down to is that you need to calibrate the ADC to get a good enough reading of a 1 volt per octave input, given that you quantize the input into seminodes. So I have implemented a calibration menu for the CV inputs, and since we have an accurate output signal, I can use that to automate the calibration procedure. Press the system button and select CV1 AutoCal. Now follow the instructions on the display and self-patch the module between out A and CV1. Press the knobs to start the calibration. The CV inputs have both unipolar and bipolar modes, so the calibration procedure will automatically switch between those. After the calibration has finished, the calibration parameters will be stored in e -square prom if you press the knob, but you can bail out with the system button if you want to discard them. Now you can calibrate the CV2 input in the same way. But how does this calibration procedure work? It starts in unipolar mode by setting a voltage close to 0 volts to null out the offset error and after that it outputs a high voltage, checks the gain and adjusts it until it hits the correct voltage. You can see that it overshoots and undershoots for each iteration, but the values will eventually home in and settle at some point. When it gets the same value five times in a row, the calibration is completed and it will exit. After that, the bipolar mode is calibrated in a similar manner. Okay, that's all for today. There are still a lot of coding to be done to get the basic functionality for setting CV in the parameters and also different trigger conditions. 
I might need to fix a couple of potential issues with the hardware as well, so a second board spin may be needed. In the next episode I will wrap up this project and I will present the finished module, post all the manufacturing files and source code on my GitHub. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon again.